The dust is settling in New Hampshire, and the reigning champ remains undefeated. Former President Trump notching another huge win in the GOP primary and defeating Nikki Haley by a significant margin of 11 points. The victory makes Trump the first GOP candidate since 1976 to win both Iowa and New Hampshire. And there's no doubt about it, the momentum is firmly on Trump's side. But Nikki Haley is refusing to call it quits. I want to congratulate Donald Trump on his victory tonight. You've all heard the chatter among the political class. They're falling all over themselves, saying this race is over. It's not over. Well, I have news for all of them. Woo! New Hampshire is first in the nation. It is not the last in the yeah! nation. Former President Trump was not too pleased to hear that Nikki Haley was staying in the race, and he went scorched earth on her. I can go up and I can say to everybody, oh, thank you for the victory. It's wonderful. It's one. Or I can go up and say, who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before and, like, claimed a victory? She did very poorly, actually. I watched her in the fancy dress that probably wasn't so fancy. Come up. I said, what's she doing? We won. Nikki Haley getting a little help last night from people who aren't registered Republicans. Fox News voter analysis says 67 percent of independents picked Haley, as did 94 percent of undeclared Democrats. And it looks like a liberal network caught up with one of them. I voted for Nikki Haley, and it was certainly a strategic vote. Well, I wouldn't vote for her in a general election, particularly on our differences with uh, climate change solution, a woman's right to bodily autonomy, or uh, incarceration rates. I think a vote for Nikki Haley is, helps diminish Trump's influence in the RNC and their nomination, but is also a vote towards democracy. You know, um Martha, it's not the first time we're hearing this, that people who took advantage of the fact that independents, 40 percent of them, can, and can vote in the New Hampshire primary for either major party kind of did it to play games, but they won't vote for Nikki Haley in a general election. It's not a huge slice uh, who actually played that game. There were about 4,000 voters who filed early enough, Democrats, true Democrats, who wanted to participate, they had to do it by the beginning of October in order to do that. Mm. This is the live free die or, or live free or die state, right? I'm sorry, I can't talk. I've been <laughs> <laughs> but so the largest political party, the largest political group in that in, in the state in, of New Hampshire is independents. They're larger than Republicans and Democrats. And we're seeing this around the country. We're seeing 43% now register as independents. And I think what is going on here, besides that young man, who, and I, don't, I think that's a very small slice of the pie in reality. Um, but I think what's going on here is you're getting something called, and there's a very interesting article in the Free Press this week called The Great Scramble. And you're seeing movement in these parties. You're seeing people who are, you know, President Trump has created this movement that is kind of in and of itself its own very fierce driven force in the country. And he's getting people, he's getting Latinos, he's getting black voters, he's now getting college women, he's getting a lot of people crossing into that category that were never there before. And if that continues to increase, that's going to be a very, very uh, compelling argument for him for another term. But you also have, you know, these people who feel left out by that process, who consider themselves conservative, who are looking for something else. And the question is whether or not you know, as a sort of quasi-incumbent, someone who was president and now isn't president and wants to be president again, what kind of numbers does he need to get over that hurdle? You know, so is he, is he getting those numbers to get back in? If you're just an incumbent president, you're going to be with your own party at 84, mm -hmm. 85, 90 percent in some cases, right? So this is just what we watch, you know, in terms of the politics and how it all moves over the course of the next 10 months. All right, Greg. Um, you know, it sounds like Nikki Haley is claiming victory. She came in third in Iowa. She came in second in New Hampshire. It looks like she's going to get trounced in North Carolina, her own state, where you've got everyone, the lieutenant governor, the governor, the Congress people, both United States senators. Uh, she's going to get trounced in Carolina. What, what, what is she thinking? This is the system. This is what you, you can't you can't concede until you concede, right? It's like then all the money goes away and she's got to stay. So it's like we all we, we can all see it. She can all see it. And clearly she did win the vote of Democrats. If the Democrats hadn't been in there, it would have been more lopsided than like a, a sexy dude contest between me and Kilmeade. This reminds me. 
of the GameStop wow. controversy. You remember? Yeah. yeah. All the amateur traders like drove up the price of a video game company and the press went nuts and then the company you know returned to obscurity and the media acted like it never happened i feel like that's what this is like it's a great story for a couple of days but it's artificially created and there's something about trump whenever he's in a race everybody else sounds like a politician or acts like a politician that's an, and it forces people to choose their lanes and and nikki uh, to my chagrin, I'm not even sure I'm using that word correctly. To my chagrin, she chose the identity lane, and mm -hmm. which fed the media and fed yeah. the Democrats and got her Democrats. But for for me, as a as a conservative libertarian, it turns me off and it turns off Republicans mm -hmm. because we get enough of that identity baloney from the other side. So it felt like she wasn't running against Trump, but running against the party by pandering to Democrats. It was almost like her strategy was, hey, I'm not as racist as the party I belong to. So she made, she talked about her race and mentioned her gender. But these postmortems always undermine the manufactured hoopla that precedes it, right? We spend a week creating all this energy, anxiety, and excitement, and then, oh yeah, we knew how this was gonna go. It's like people building up, weathermen building up a giant snowmageddon, and then you only get two inches. This is where you insert the Jesse Waters joke. <laughs> okay. That you told him the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Um, Viewers. You know, I'll ask, I'll ask this of you, um, Jessica. The truth is that last night, CNN, MSNBC, again, they decided to dip out of coverage when Donald Trump said, uh, uh, took the stage. You know, if the, the Democrats claim that they're the protectors of democracy, they don't even want to have Americans here. Someone who is destined to be the party's nominee. What, what, how was that democratic? Well, I think they dipped out of the coverage when he lied about winning New Hampshire in 2020. That was, it was a fact check. It wasn't like we just don't want to see him. It was different in Iowa. They didn't, or at least MSNBC didn't want to take it. And Rachel Maddow talked I think about he that. About the Both he of did them. win primaries. No, there. He, no, he, he had, did. That yes, he wasn't. Did. What he, he won. Okay. But that's what they. No. He won the primary, but he lost handedly, obviously, to Joe Biden in, in 2020. the general. Right. right. But right. that wasn't. What he was talking about. It, but but what about the concept of not allowing a man? I mean, don't, I, don't, don't they trust the American people to make decisions so that they should tell us I, what to think? I am all for putting him out there as much as possible and letting people continue to see it. Because the truth of the matter is, the more people see of Donald Trump, the more they dislike him and vote against him. And that's what happened. They had his four years of the presidency. And on the campaign trail in 2020, he was a turnoff for people. And that's why he lost by several million votes. Um, but I don't work at CNN or MSNBC. There's obviously a reason that they make their decisions, and, and that's the path that they want to go down. I think that we should show all the candidates. I like that Dean Phillips shows up and he talks to people here in RFK Jr. I think it says something about who they believe are going to vote for them and what their intentions are in terms of being, quote, good Democrats. Well, they, they, they're either covering the election or they're not. Yeah. If it's, you're covering the election on New Hampshire I'm, and Iowa nights, when they come out to do their speech, you take the speech. If I'm, you want to talk about it afterwards and critique it, Fine, but you can't you, you can't give people you know take away their opportunity to watch it. I, they can switch they can just turn the channel and, and watch us because right. we're going to show that all was, of it. That's great, and we had great coverage, and I was thrilled to be part of it. And you guys did a, a wonderful job. I'm not agreeing with the point. I would have aired it. Okay. In terms of the outcome, and I said this in Iowa as well. It does liberals no favors to deny the successes that Trump has had. What he did in Iowa was historic, getting past 50 percent. It was a huge win last night. Like you said, it hasn't been done since 1976. But that doesn't change the fact that there are these huge flashing red lights for the Republican Party, and that's what Nikki Haley is talking about. So that she won 67% of independents, if that trend continues, and it's higher than it was in Iowa, and I doubt it will increase to South Carolina, but we know that independents were who de decided the election in 2020. And then two really big numbers that matter that have jumped from Iowa. 43% of her supporters in Iowa said, I won't vote for him in the general election. That went up to 70% in New Hampshire. And then the question in the exit polls about what happens if Donald Trump is convicted of a felony, right? He has these 91 uh, counts out there. In Iowa, 32% said that they wouldn't support him. And that number jumped to 50%. All right. So you cannot win a general Trump. election with those kinds of numbers. And that's the case that Nikki Haley's making and why these Republican donors will continue well, to pump money into an alternative 
because there are Republicans who are extremely dissatisfied. Okay, but Charlie, let me ask you this. The fact that in both New Hampshire and in Iowa, immigration came in first, the economy came in second. There's no question if you want to talk about whether or not Trump is going to win. Everyone, all the polls show that right. Trump is stronger than anyone on immigration. And, and, and those issues are most important among everybody, especially independents. Yeah. It's not just Republicans who care about it. I also think it's very interesting uh, to hear Democrats are always saying, oh, no, we want to face Donald Trump because he'll be so easy to beat. Yeah. But every opportunity they get, they go out and vote for, for Nikki Haley. So well, I, don't, I, I don't really understand what the strategy there is. Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, stepping back, big picture here, um, Nikki Haley is, uh, you know, the, if you want to know what money does in politics, the, money allows yes. her to stay in the race. And that's why she's staying in the race. The reason Ron DeSantis had to get out of the race is he had no money left. Right. Um, and so she's going to be able and, and my, my suspicion is that she's going, she's out with an ad already. She's going to uh, sort of test the waters for about a week mm -hmm. and kind of see if the numbers move in South Carolina mm -hmm. and then make a decision after that. Because if she goes into South Carolina, she will have lost uh, yeah. Iowa, New, New Hampshire, Hampshire, and Nevada. Yep. And then she's going to be going into her home state. And she has to reckon with the idea that you know, she obviously thinks she has a, a, a bright future. And, in, of course, in Republican politics, uh, you know, the, the runner-up from last time is always in the best position. And between, you know, she's going to try to consider herself uh, that runner-up. But do you want to fall into the ash heap of people like Al Gore and John Edwards who lost their own state, which is, like, beyond humiliating? It is. And, uh, and, and I, so I think that, you know, at some point, uh, and then that big money that is behind her, because you're right, they don't like Trump. And, and you know, another thing about the big scramble, you know, we talk about third party candidates and, and you know, third party, uh, the, uh, the American system is very hostile to third party candidates. But Donald Trump has, is sort of like our first third party candidate, yes. our first independent to ever run. And he pisses everybody off, Republicans and Democrats, which, by the way, I think is a very good thing. And, and not the, the least of which is the fact that he has undone, you know, uh, the answer to every election uh, in memory has been money. If you have more money, you always win, except in the case of Donald Trump. Absolutely he beat right. Hillary Clinton, Absolutely he right. beat Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis, right. even though they outspend him massively. It's a yeah, movement, be, and the yeah. enthusiasm is very, it's very visceral. It's very real when but you're but on a campaign loses. trail. Yes. Very real. Yeah. But he still we'll loses the election. Yeah, we will well, see. we'll see. It's well. different time. Ahead, okay. the media and Democrats want to put Grandpa Joe in the basement again. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.